Welcome to a new episode of On The Spot Review. I'm going to talk about Borat 2. Uh, this was a sequel I really wasn't expecting, and I wasn't expecting to like it as much as I did, because usually with sequels to movies like this, it always tries to bank off of the same character, that kind of stuff. Like, you know, a very easy example would be Anchorman 2, and how that kind of doesn't really do much for the for that movie, etc. They just try to bank off of stuff, etc., but this was actually a very pleasant surprise, and the only thing I remember going into this was thinking, I'm probably not going to like the do- the um, the daughter angle that much, but I actually was pleasantly surprised because the daughter angle of it really made the, made the story very charming and endearing, and I really liked the development of these characters over time of this movie. The only thing that this movie I really wasn't... Uh, feeling was a lot of the written gags. Uh, I love the uh, the public stuff and the stuff that he recorded with people outside, etc. But uh, the stuff that's like written in that those kind of gags, I really wasn't feeling it. Like there was one where in the beginning of the movie where they're telling him, "Oh, uh, they're telling him like, oh." You need to go to America. Like the story, the premise of, of, of Borat 2 is that Borat has to go to America to deliver a monkey to Michael Pence to make up for making Kazakhstan a laughingstock. So he, he does that, and he asks them, can I bring Azamat with me, uh, the character from the first movie? And they're like, you can't, he's already dead, and it shows that he was made into a chair. And that joke just didn't, didn't really do much for me. And that kind of stuff I, I really wasn't feeling. But when it came to... Filming in public and all that kind of stuff. I loved it. Like the one thing I really loved about this movie was they kind of capitalized enough on on the first movie by saying by having Borat literally saying, uh, "I can't go around as myself because people are gonna recognize me. I can't. I can't do this." And and you know and from there uh, he starts to like change the sky. So it was. Sasha Baron Cohen playing a character, playing a character, which I really liked. I liked that that layer of of comedy with that, where it's like, yeah, we know the first movie was a huge success, and instead of just ignoring that, let's incorporate that with the movie. And and Bari cannot really go around just being himself, which is true. Like he like if he were to do Borat to as Borat one hundred percent, none of of nothing would work none of the footage would work uh you know they 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 show it off by just having him wear a bag over his head and him walking around and everyone's like oh oh you have a, a, an autograph you can't have an autograph oh my god borat's here so he had to uh so they showed that just to kind of show you yeah he can't be borat to do what he needs to do because everyone's going to recognize him so he changes his, his outfit to be many different people which i really liked uh that they kind of incorporated that into the story uh, so, the monkey that he was supposed to give to Michael Pence dies, and he's stuck with his daughter, and around this time he's like, you know what, I'll just give my daughter to Michael Pence as a, uh, you know, as, as the motive of the, of the story to get the story rolling. I loved a lot of the comedy scenes with it. One of my favorites is, so she eats a cupcake that has a baby, uh, like a baby doll in it, so she eats the whole thing whole. They go to a a um, a pregnancy clinic uh, with that saying, "Oh, oh, she has a baby inside, her and we want to get rid of it. We want to get rid of the baby." And the guy tells him, like, not knowing that they're talking about like a, a toy. He's like, "Well, you know, you're already on this path, and you should just you know go carry this and get and you know give it birth. It's a life. It's a life in you." And he's like, "No, no, no. The baby's dead. It's like this big, and and it's it's dead." No, no, you need to carry on, even though, and it was, it's like, we could do a sonogram to show you, <laughs> and, and I just loved that the guy did not, like, ask any other question, like, to, to kind of understand that maybe they're not talking about a real baby, and, and, and one of my favorite scenes in that was, it's like, the, the baby's gonna tear her asshole apart, and it's like this, and he's like, yeah, you know, you don't have to, you know, now we can just give birth to the baby, you don't have to, like, go through the, the traditional ways, etc., and it was just, that, that part was, was, was cracking me up. The other part was, so they go to a pageant kind of thing, and, uh, Borat's tell, talking to this other guy in front of that guy's daughter, 
saying, oh, how much would you, would, uh, would you pay to have sex with my daughter? And the guy just tells him, <laughs> tells him, oh, I'd pay uh, $500. And he's like, oh, very nice, my friend. My, you're my buddy. He gives him a high five. That guy's daughter tells me he's disgusting. <laughs> and I just love, I love, I loved the, uh, the reaction of that. I mean, a lot of stuff that, that, Sacha Baron Cohen got in this film blows my mind just how he got it there and, and uh, what it showed and I feel like a lot of people are going to just look at this and say oh this is all scripted and the only time that he has come out to say that he broke character was there's a scene where he goes to, to a synagogue in this in this movie and that was and he talks to a holocaust survi a survivor that was the only part of that movie where he actually told them ahead of time like look i'm coming in and i'm going to do shit okay so you're just going to try to warm up to me and all that kind of stuff like like he kind of tells them how the scene how he wants the scene to play out etc and and uh, you know all that was was semi scripted which which came to a nice scene but that's like the only scene where uh, he kind of told people ahead of time what was going on. Everything else was 100% genuine. Like, he raided into a stall uh, at a Michael Pence rally. He waited in a stall until Michael Pence was going to be on stage to, to take his daughter to, to, to him, pretty much. Um, so, uh, I like a lot of stuff with that. There's a scene where they incorporate the coronavirus into the whole thing as well, which I really liked as well, where it was like him trying... So... The coronavirus comes at around a time where uh, Borat is trying to get his daughter to get breast implants. So he goes, he goes to the, this is another great scene too, where he's sitting there, he's like telling him like, oh yeah, you know, I want my daughter, you know, to look so good that people are going to perform sex attacks on her. And, and he gets, and they get the plastic surgeon to, to say like, you know, the, the daughter asks him, oh, what would you do to me? And he's like, well, I'd fix your nose. And she's just like, what's wrong with my nose? Uh, he goes to that. And then he, he tells him, like, they, they ask him straight up, like, what do you, um, would you perform a sex attack on my daughter? And he's just like, oh, uh, well, well, if you're, if, if, if your father wasn't here. And it was just like, what the fuck? Like, that, that to me blew my mind that, that they got him to say that, like, straight out. And I was like, what the fuck? So that's going on, and then they're like, okay, let's, let's do the, the surgery. So he gives this woman a duffel bag full of money. The, the I think it was $27,000, 27000 something dollars to do the uh, operation. So he gives him the duffel bag of money, She all in $1 bills. So she was counting them all, and then says, well, you're $36 short of the money, of the amount you need. So you need to um, you need you need to get that much money to to pay it, to pay all that stuff. So they're like, okay, we gotta leave and and you gotta pay and we gotta get seventy six seventy six dollars, uh, which I which I thought was just funny. It's like really you got all you got nearly everything you need, but man, that seventy six dollars is is the uh that that's the amount. So anyways, they they leave and. Here's kind of what, what makes the story, that makes the daughter angle work so well. The daughter starts to, like, kind of have some agency, and she starts saying, like, you know, the book, the, the handbook that he has is full of shit. You know, women can drive, women can do this, women can do so many things. You know, this book is, is bullshit. And Borea is like, what the fuck? The book is bullshit? What? And he's, and, and around that time, they start to realize, like... That they start to form a bond with each other, and that's really what I liked about this movie a, a lot. That I think you know, not a lot of people are going to be focused on in this movie because a lot of it is is politically charged. It's 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 a really anti-Trump movie, which is which is it is what it is. But uh, I do love that this movie shows this this development between Bora and his daughter. That they start off like, uh not really bonding or or anything like they just kind of see you know what they see etc like you know they kind of give you exactly you know what you know about them but as it moves as the movie progresses they start to kind of bond and i really do like that and, and you do feel that as the movie goes on it feels very organic uh how they how they get along by the end where borat starts to like really start to say like you know i have you know I'm starting to see her as a daughter, and I'm not really seeing her as like, oh, a, a pawn to kind of give to to Michael Pence or Rudy Giuliani that later on later on happens in the movie. So I really like that it, it it has all this stuff going on, this heart in it. There is heart in this movie, 
at, with all this nonsense going on. And when they're doing this whole thing with the coronavirus, Borat starts to live with these conspiracy theorists. And, and you know, they're, they're, they're in their own way, like, nonsen- nonsensical. Like, they believe that the Clintons drink the blood of babies or whatever. <laughs> like, it's, it's wild what these people were saying. But at the same time, they, they, to their credit, they... It, it's it's it, it it does show some heart in in you know as much as as this movie criticizes America and and Trump and Trump supporters etc it does show some heart with what it's doing like these people who are conspiracy theorists and they, and you know you know you you you, do, you disagree with them I mean obviously that you know do you really gonna believe that the Clintons drink babies drink baby blood or whatever like that that that's nonsensical and all that but. You know they 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 welcomed a stranger and was like kind to him even though like bro was kind of like testing their <laughs> their resolve of their conspiracy theories like there's a scene where he shows them this this uh, guidebook and as they're going through it they're like wait this book is all full of conspiracy theorists man you can't really believe this is not scientific while they believe their own conspiracy theorists but uh it, it, there is some heart there that like they uh, they allowed Bart to live with them and they and they kind of like. Uh, tolerated whatever he was doing at that time so it's it, as much of, of a criticism as it is that this movie does it does show some heart and in, you know intertwined with what's going on so i do like that i do like some of those moments uh the other thing that blew my mind that that he got on film was so he poses as a rock star more poses as a rock star to kind of infiltrate this rally whatever so he sings a song and the song is so like uh, uh, violent, etc. Like it, it, it's pretty much saying like, what should we do with people who don't agree with us? What should we do with journalists? All this kind of stuff. And and the question, and it's like, should we just ignore them or should we chop them up? And it's like, we should chop them up. It's like, what the fuck? Like what? Like he gets this rally going and, and this, these chantings going. That is just like, it, it's insane. Now, of course, you, you know some people might argue that, oh, well, this is just heat of the moment and, and all that kind of stuff. But it, it is wild that you have a group of people saying some of these things. But uh, I do like a lot of the stuff that this movie happens to get on footage that that it feels genuine a lot of the times. I, I mean, it, it's it's very it's a very interesting movie in, in how it's structured and how it kind of. Um, circumvents your expectations or subverts your expectations in most of it uh the Rudy Giuliani interview is is, is so like uh everyone's talking about this because it's a big it's a big like moment uh that, that came out and my and out of it one of my favorite lines was Brett storms in to save his daughter and says she's 15 she's too old for you Rudy Giuliani <laughs> And I was like, man, what a fucking bird. Uh, so, so that that that's going on. Uh, I do, but that interview, I, th- I think that's the other thing that a lot of people are ignoring. That interview is, is wild in of its own way. Like, uh, should they got Rudy Giuliani to say that? Oh, I don't think that the Chinese ate bats to to get the coronavirus. They they manufactured this thing and they spread it around, and it, it, and it's like. You know, it's this whole other conspiracy theory that's been going on, and then, like, at least from what I remember from even from the debate that happened, like, Trump said, like, oh, I, I did all this stuff, like, before the Democrats wanted me to, and all this kind of stuff, and then Rudy Giuliani says, well, Trump did stuff that even his advisors didn't say, it. so it's like, I don't know, like, it, it's 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 wild, but that interview was, was great in its own way, you see this weird interaction between his daughter and Rudy Giuliani, it's very, like, odd and uncomfortable and all that kind of stuff but uh it, it I, I still think that overall it is a very solid movie better than what i was expecting you know i i, I went in thinking that this was just gonna be it, a cash grab it was gonna be a very like you know okay that it's it's borat whatever but it does it it has a lot of stuff that i actually didn't genuinely like i loved the the dynamic between the daughter and the father uh, Bora and his daughter, I do like that that bond that they get through and the development of that and how uh, they come together by the end. I do like, I like the structure of this movie and the stuff that they captured on film was was genuinely really, really funny and, and uh, clever 
in how he set up these scenes with with these people unknowing unknowingly that they're that they're walking into a uh, kind of a trap almost. But I do like a lot of that and and some of the stuff that they ca- capture on uh, on tape. Uh, but at the same time, I I just love the heart that's in there. Like it's a it's a criticism and it's all this kind of stuff, sure. But there is there is a there is a charm in this film sprinkled in with each scene and I do I do like that. I think that makes this movie a a um a a, a very interesting film to watch on uh, if anything. It's on Amazon Prime. Uh check it out. Uh I would probably give this movie an 8 out of 10. I think it you know the charm and the heart of it really really um you know is the backbone of this movie and a lot of the stuff that they capture on tape is really really uh surprising so i do like all that stuff all those things come together very well in this movie uh so i really liked it uh you know i, I liked it more than what i thought it was i was going in thinking it was just going to be uh a very shallow movie and the beginning kind of gave me that vibe too it was just like yeah okay but then when he got to america when they gave him the, when when I mean, as I said, like, the moment that Borat said, I can't be myself because I'm so popular or whatever, that's when I was on board. I was like, yeah, okay, good. They're, they're kind of addressing that, yeah, this is a popular thing, but we're going to go around that and not really do that. So I do like that that they kind of acknowledge how big the first movie was. So I, I, I like this movie. It was better than what I was expecting um, when I first watched it. So that, so when I first, when I, when I was like hearing about it, but it really got really good as, as it went on. I really do like a lot of the gags that were there. Uh, the genuine in, in public stuff I liked. Uh, as I said, the written stuff is, the written gags are, are like, hey, you know, they're serviceable, but they're just, you know, I wasn't feeling them nearly as much as these interactions that they had with all these other people throughout the movie. Uh, so I would, as I said, I would give this movie an 8 out of 10. It's, it's fun. It's an interesting movie to watch. Uh, I liked it. So there you go. Thank you for watching this on-spot review. I'll see you guys next time. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye-bye.